Who's hosting this show? Hi, this is Amy Lewis. Or makeup. This is Engineers Unplugged. Hi, this is Amy Lewis, and we're back for an incredible episode of Engineers Unplugged. We've got Colin and Hal, and we're going to be talking about ACI. This is not just your average unicorn. This is the real deal. So, Colin, take it away. Thanks, Amy. So, ACI, application-centric infrastructure. Seems like here at Cisco Live, everyone's talking about it, but what does it actually mean? And really, what does it mean to the more traditional networking people like myself? Are we still going to be in a job in a year's time? Well, let's hope so, and let's talk about it. So, application-centric infrastructure. So what Cisco are doing is basically turning traditional thinking on its head. As a traditional networking CCIE, I'm used to designing from the core to the distribution layer, all the way out to the server, and then we get to that application. What we're doing with ACI is turning that on its head, starting with that application. After all, that's where the real value is. So what's this infrastructure going to look like? So, we have a spine level, and then we have a leaf level. The leaves connect into the spine, and then we there's no connection between the spine switches. That's probably the you know the initial um, big difference. This is all 40 gig, you know, 40 gig low latency IP fabric. Um, so, Hal, talk us about what we can do with this fabric. I think that some of the most interesting stuff, Colin, is where the APIC is, is re evolving and, and turning into something that's uh, really the center of uh, the universe. So, APIC is the API controller and that's programmable now. And you're going to be addressing network configuration a lot differently than you have in the past. Higher level abstraction, thinking about applications, tenants. So the, the, the level of where you think is, is different, but a lot of the concepts are the same. The relationships that, you know, I've got endpoints that are in groups and they're going to talk to these other endpoints. So let's say I've got oh, um, you know, a, a web services company. We have a, a web server uh, farm. We have an application team, uh, tier. We have a database tier. You know how the communication between these layers is going to work, but you're not going to be describing that in terms of a firewall rule anymore. You're going to be describing that in terms of a contract. This communication must happen between here and here and here. Think about it in terms of we're scaling differently, the world is different, and you have to kind of move with it. The, the mode of operation, um, think about desired state configuration. So the way that you plan things is, is going to change. It's going to be a new world. Absolutely. Absolutely, and in this new world, we mentioned you mentioned programmability there, which brings me back to how do we get that programmability? So you mentioned the APIC. What is the APIC? The APIC is the Application Policy Infrastructure Controller. That's where all that intelligence and that programmability, programmability even happens. So as a traditional networking guy, I'm used to going hop by hop into all these devices, setting up my configuration, setting up my routing. That's not how ACI is going to work. All that is defined, as Hal said, by policy in the Application Policy Infrastructure Controller, the APIC. It's, there, it's, it's defined there and it's then pushed to all of this infrastructure here. Based on Nexus 9000, high density, 40 gig, 100 gig infrastructure, you know, it, it's going to be an exciting world. So again, what's fundamentally different about the ACI infrastructure? So again, as a traditional networking guy, we're used to you know, plugging in all our service modules up at the spine here, or the core layer as we would have known it. That again gets turned on its head. All of our service modules uh, on our services, all, we can basically connect all of our servers, client infrastructure, only to the Leaf devices. So, I mean, and that just opens up a whole, a whole raft of options and scalability, because we can now scale out this whole solution and you know, without compromising any performance. I think what's going to be interesting is when it comes to um, things outside of the networking realm, traditionally speaking, you've got the applications, the database, the storage, the network. With your Cisco equipment and with ACI, you're going to have access to a lot of data about the network. What you're going to need help with is the pieces that come from outside of the network, and with the ACI having things like describing who the, the customer is, describing what the service is at a very low layer, you're going to be able to take that and relate it to other pieces of uh, information coming in from your system. So for example, with Splunk, we're getting data from all these other systems, doing some correlation, um, you know, launch partner with Cisco, with ACI, so we're going to have some cool things to, to, that you can tangibly make sense, have some visibility, not only on the network side, but you know, bringing in the application and security aspects and all these other things. Um, I, I think that, that probably people are wondering about, you know, do I have to become a programmer now? For sure. 
Absolutely. Um, and again, you know, up until now, I've managed to avoid programming. Um, you know, and as I say, as a, as a network are, infrastructure. Are you nervous? Do you um, think you should be nervous? Well, I, I'm not nervous. I don't. Oh, absolutely. But go no, ahead. No. I want to know what you think. Okay, absolutely. And the tradition, you know, traditional CCIE hasn't ever had to touch program before. Um, but I guess, I mean, just to give you an example, you know, where it really switched in my brain as maybe this program stuff, you know, is worth looking at. Um, I was doing a large data center deployment. I was asked to, you know, pull the configs off, you know, a hundred different switches, uh, and then, you know, add that into a spreadsheet. I'm thinking, oh, sure, okay, give me, you know, give me a day to do that. I'll do all that SSH. Uh, and yet, uh, one of our programmer guys, not even a very, you know, a, a, he wasn't a programmer. He was a scripter, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and he, a and he, couple of lines of code, all that was done. So that's when I thought, okay, maybe I, I should start, you know, learning to script. But now, all I hear now is Python. Python this, Python that. You need to be able to do, you know, RESTful API calls. So tell me a bit more about that. How, how do I need to know Python in the in the network of the future? I'll, I'll put it this way: it wouldn't hurt. It's not going to be an instant transition. You don't have to be a Python developer tomorrow, type of thing. So at least don't worry about that aspect. But Python is a is a great language in the sense that it's cross-platform. It's applicable to a lot of different use cases. And you know, you'll be able to do interesting things that you didn't think were possible against not one but many devices, and not just on the network side, mind you, you know, against lots of different systems. So I think Python would be a great skill to start building on. And uh, you know, it's it, definitely don't consider it as a programmer versus a network engineer type of problem. It's really about kind of um, stepping back just a tiny bit. You still have to understand how things connect, and then realizing, okay we have to do this a little differently. We have to scale, we have to automate. How, what are my new tools with which to automate? And Cisco's got a vision for that that will deliver that. Absolutely right, and I think that's what is giving me a lot of comfort. I mean, a lot of the people I spoke to at Cisco Live are absolutely committed in bringing the, you know, the traditional networker on this journey to ACI. Okay, that's the perfect opportunity. Number one, this is awesome. I learn something every time that I've gotten to see these guys whiteboard this off, off screen, so this is really fantastic. But you know what time it is. It's, it's unicorn time. It's, it's unicorn time. And this has got to be next gen unicorn. So as, as we evolve, we don't want to be dinosaurs in the data center. We've got to learn new skills. So let's see, what is that next gen unicorn? He's, he's learning those new skills, maybe some Python. Let's go, go, unicorn time. Maybe he can even do it, you know, in his sleep. So how I'm gonna let you commentate. Okay. I'm seeing a horse with eyes, okay. I like the eyes, that's that's rather fashionable. Oh, okay, it's a girl. All right, it's evolved, oh, there we go. A nice, strong unicorn horn, I like it. We're now very clearly talking about a unicorn. Yes, I like the way that this is developing the style. Colin, you, you've, you've really got it. Okay, looks a little, little angry. No, no, determined. This is a determined unit. Is that a birthday hat? Happy birthday, aw. Because UCS is turning five. How sweet. Happy birthday, UCS. Okay, I'm pretty much gonna give over the hosting uh, of the show to these guys. So uh, you'll probably see them next week because I, I don't have a job anymore. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. This is awesome. We'll see you next time on Engineers Unplugged.